It's the middle of summer. It's the perfect time to go traveling with your camera, whether you're going on a photography trip or whether you're going on a just general nice holiday, but you're thinking about taking your camera as well. Let's run through some tips for travel photography because it's that time of year. You know, it's that time of year where you want to get those perfect shots. You want to go adventuring and get the shot you've always dreamed of. So let's make sure you can do that. It's you to a Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where every week, every Tuesday, to be precise, you get a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now, this week, we're going to be talking about travel photography. You know, it's that time of year where you might be going on a holiday, you might be going traveling, maybe you're going on a holiday to take photos, maybe that's the whole point, or maybe you're just going away, but you want to take a camera, you're going somewhere nice, you want to get some really nice snaps. So we're going to run through some tips. We're going to run through some travel photography tips to make the most of those opportunities and to get the best possible shots. So let's dive right in. Let's start by talking about planning. Now this is probably a little bit cliche. You probably hear this in every single travel tips or travel photography tutorial stuff. But planning out your trips is so, so important. Planning out exactly what you want to get, what you want to get out of the trip and stuff like that can just make such a big difference. Now, this can come down to researching the area, so researching locations, looking at what other photos people have taken, looking at photo spots, what's the best spots, best times of day, which is normally going to be sunrise and sunset. You're probably going to get the best light at that sort of time. But generally, where to go, what to expect, the weather, everything like that can play a big part into planning out your trip. Now, obviously, if you're doing a full photography trip, this is super important because you want to know where to be going and at what times, you know, because you want to have those amazing landscapes at sunset. Maybe you want to go and visit some of the markets and stuff like that during the day. But if you're also doing this as just a, a holiday, a nice holiday, you want to take your camera, you want to get some nice pictures while you're there, this is also a great thing to do as well because you can you can really prioritize some locations. You can really be be picky about where you want to shoot. So if you're if you're going away for a week and you you're thinking, okay, cool, I'll do at least one sunset somewhere. I'll get at least one thing. Where's the best place to go? Well, planning it out, that's gonna give you the best chance to get a perfect shot while you're away. Be prepared, I guess, is is the crux of this. You know, the more prepared you are the better you're going to be able to adapt to different things, and the better you're going to know exactly what you want to get out of it. And that's really important because it leads us on to the next thing I want to talk about, which is gear. Now, this is this is a big thing with travel photography. This is a little bit different to, to landscape or portrait or anything like that, where you can take a bunch of different lenses, you can take a bunch of different stuff and not really worry too much about it. It doesn't matter if you have a super heavy bag. Now, landscape photography, you might be walking for a few hours to get there, but it's just one day doesn't matter that much whereas travel photography it's a little bit different because you've got to carry all this stuff all the time you've got to have it with you pretty much all the time so you want to travel light that's the main thing here you want to travel as light as you can while still having what you need now that for me that means taking a mirrorless camera i tend to go for a mirrorless one that's because i still want the full frame camera I still want to be able to have interchangeable lenses, I want to still be able to do that, but I want to have the lightest possible system. So I tend to go for mirrorless over DSLR, and I'll tend to go mirrorless over things like compact or, or bridge camera, because like I say, I want the interchangeable lenses, I want the full frame uh, sensor. But a bridge camera, a compact camera, they're totally viable options, depending on what kind of thing you want to get. I've even, I even know someone actually who takes a GoPro away with them, and they still come back with some pretty decent pictures. So it just depends on, on what your level uh, of traveling is going to be and how much you want to get out of the trip as to what you want to get. Now, I tend to take, like I said, a mirrorless camera, so it'll generally be something like a Sony a7 III, uh, Sony a7R 3 or the a7R 4 would be great. But you can also go something like a Panasonic S1R, that'd be great for those landscapes. Or, or anything like that. Now, in terms of lenses, there's there's a good conversation to be had there between whether you should take prime lenses, zoom lenses. I tend to take zoom lenses because I want the versatility. There's a lot of different types of shots that I want to get, and I know if I take uh, two zoom lenses, I'm going to be able to get pretty much everything that I want to get. Now, I'll generally go for a 24 to 70 mil f 2.8 that is the workhorse that is what i'll use for almost everything i'll generally take that as my main lens and then i'll take a 70 to 200 f 2.8 as well that's going to give me the option to go in going a little bit closer 
to different things. If I want to isolate something in the picture, if I want to have uh, a, a, you know, a much more compressed look to things, if I want to have someone in the frame and kind of compress that background, I can, I can shoot at a much longer focal length and actually get a little bit of bokeh in there. I can get some nice compression and make it look really nice. So if I want to do that, then I can. I don't, I, for my style, while I'm traveling, I don't really need something like an 85 1.4 because I'm not going for that kind of bokeh shot. Now there's definitely a conversation to be had about taking primes. I could totally imagine taking a 35 mil, especially at something like 1.4. So you've got a super bright lens. 35, you can be able to get the landscapes, you can get kind of shots of people, great all rounder. 1.4 means you're gonna be able to shoot later, you can be able to get that nice bit of bokeh as well. So that, that's definitely an option there as well. I can imagine that, but for me, it tends to be the zooms. I have even gone down to one lens before for a whole trip, which is a 24 to 105 millimeter F4. Great lens. That was the, I was actually using the Canon one, the 24 to 105 millimeter F4 L lens. Great lens. And because I knew I wasn't going to be going for any shots, uh, it's kind of super late in the day, it was summer, so I was shooting to sunset, but not really past then, and I was generally going to be going for a quite a deep depth of field, mostly shooting landscapes. I knew I didn't really need a faster lens than that, and that focal length it was amazing, it was perfect. I was able to get everything I wanted using that, using that lens. So it's important to think about what you want to get out of the trip, what you want to have as your end result and that can inform your choice as to what you want to take. Now, in terms of other stuff that I tend to take with me, filters are quite important. I'll take a variable ND and I'll take a polarizer. Now, I'll usually just take the two. I'll take them for my main lens, so the 24 to 70. That's because I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be shooting, and if the situation arises where I might want to get a long exposure, which it has before, it's just nice to have that variable ND with you, you know? I tend to take it with me because I shoot a lot of video anyway, but if you've got it with you, then you can shoot a nice long exposure of a waterfall that you find, or a stream, or a river, or anything like that. You can get those shots, whereas if you don't have it, you're gonna regret not having it. Now, they're, they're super small, they're super light, so they don't really take up any room or, or weight in your bag, so it's kind of a no-brainer pop it in there. Like I say, I tend to take just the ones for my main lens. I don't tend to take them for the 70-200, just because I don't really need them for that. And that sort of keeps the amount that I'm taking with me down as well. Now tripods are an interesting one because I always find if I don't have a tripod I regret it. Uh, there's always a time when I think oh I wish I had a tripod right now but they're, they're a pain to carry around especially if you're traveling because obviously they're quite big and bulky and there's nothing worse I've done this than doing like a six hour trek through like the woods and up hills and all over the place to get to like a waterfall and you know you need the tripod because you're doing long exposure Oh, but it's just very frustrating. I've done that before. But what I tend to take now is, I, is one of two things. I'll either take uh, a Manfrotto Pixie, which is a nice, super small little kind of tripod that'll just sit, it's about, about that high. It just gives me the stability that I need for my camera. So it's not gonna give me any kind of height or anything like that. I can pop it on the ground, I can pop it on a rock, but it is gonna stabilize my camera. Perfect if I want to do long exposure and there's something nearby I can put it on. That is that is great. And because it's so small, it's super easy to take out with me. I don't have to think about it. And it's pretty light as well. So I don't really it doesn't really cause me any issues. Now the other thing I've been taking recently is the Vanguard VEO Go 2 travel tripod. Now this is this is a really cool tripod. And there's loads of travel tripods out there, but this one is so light. It's so, so light. I just hang it off the top of the side of my back. I took it around Rome when I went I went out there for the XT30. Uh, we were traveling all around Rome, walking all over the place for hours on end. I just had it hanging off my back. It's so handy to just have it. It didn't cause me any issues taking it. And now, whenever I go somewhere where I think, oh, that I might do long exposure, I'll take it with me. I'll just pop it on the side of my bag and I'll just I'll just wander. Otherwise, something I really can't overstate, lens wipes. You know, there's so much stuff just everywhere. And when you're traveling through whatever, deserts, woods, everything, rivers, splashing up waterfalls, everything's going on, you're gonna get stuff on your lens. You just, you're gonna get all sorts of stuff on your lens. And you're gonna need those lens wipes because it's, oh, there's nothing worse than being out there. You can take the shot, oh, there's stuff on your lens. If you've got no lens wipes, I guess it's t-shirt time. And no one wants that. No one wants to be doing that. It just doesn't feel right, does it? It just doesn't, doesn't feel right doing it. It feels wrong. So lens wipes are super important. They're, they're really easy to just pop in your bag, just take a bunch, and don't worry about it. 
So let's talk a little bit about actually taking the photographs, taking the photographs out there. So when I think of travel photography, and I think this is probably the case for most people, is, is you tend to think of landscape photography. You tend to think of those amazing vistas, you know, mountains, valleys, beaches, all kinds of stuff like that. But there's actually a lot to it that you can do. Travel photography is kind of an odd one because there's all kinds of different photography within travel photography. So yeah, definitely go for those awesome landscapes. But also maybe look for something a little bit smaller. Maybe isolate something in the landscape. Maybe maybe go in closer for one specific thing. Maybe put someone in the frame. I tend to I tend to think putting someone in your landscape looks really good. It can do one of two things. It can either kind of give a sense of scale. So if you've got this huge thing, but it's just by itself, it doesn't really, you know, you can't convey how big it is. But if you've got this huge thing and there's a person there. Oh, that's a different story. That's gonna that's gonna really give you the idea of the scale of this thing. Similarly, you can have someone kind of sitting in the landscape or interacting with the landscape. Maybe they're just sitting there looking out. But if you've got if you've got a situation where you've got this nice landscape, but there's nothing really in the foreground, just having someone sitting there looking out at this landscape can really really pull everything together. It gives a visual interest to the foreground, and it just guides the eye through because you kind of follow what they're looking at and it looks really, really good. It's also important to look for small things as well. So like I say, you can look for things in the landscapes to kind of focus in on, but I like to I like to look at things like textures because when I'm in a different place, different cultures and stuff like that, I always find that there's just, there's so many different textures that you don't see when you're when you're around kind of where you live that you don't you don't notice. There's all these interesting textures. There's really interesting people and, and I also find something that, that maybe isn't so obvious. There's all this interesting food as well, especially if you're in a, in a really different kind of place. There's really interesting and often colorful food. So like markets, uh, places where people are eating, cooking, people, they can all make great subjects for a photo. So it's not just about those amazing landscapes, it's important to kind of focus in on the smaller stuff as well. And that's all stuff that you can take photos of during the day. So if you don't want to go out and shoot in the harsh sunlight, although of course you can watch our Tutorial Tuesday video on how to get better photos in harsh sunlight, you can go and take photos of, of other things, you know, people, food, textures, and just the general culture while you're kind of waiting for sunset later in the day. Speaking of beautiful sunsets and landscapes though, it's very important to keep composition in mind. It can be so easy to get carried away with the beauty of something. If you're staring out at this beautiful vista, it can be so easy to get carried away and forget to, to really focus in on your composition because that's really going to make or break the photo. So you've got rule of thirds. That's a really easy one. That's going to get you some nice results. And it's easy to keep in, in your mind, you know, where you separate things into a grid. In fact, a lot of cameras have the grid actually in the camera you can turn on to really help you with your composition. But just placing things on those lines at like the horizon on the upper or lower line rather than the middle and things like that are really going to help to just make a better picture. You can also go for leading lines as well which are gonna gonna allow you to, to kind of guide your viewer through the photo really draw the eye and you can just create a really nice end result some other tips for taking the photos try different angles a lot of people go in and again it's so beautiful that you just start snapping away but you get back and you realize that all the all the photos are taken from the same kind of kind of angle they're all eye level and they're all just you know straight on whereas if you go go low and have the camera right down at the ground level and shooting up, that can be really interesting. Or you can climb up something, get higher up, and take some photos much higher up. That can be that can be really cool as well. And of course, the age-old tip, which is to shoot in the right light. That's just that's just a given at this point. But when it comes to shooting landscapes and stuff, sunset, sunrise, they're generally gonna give you the best light. This it's just softer light, it's just you get such nice tones, everything just looks good. It's, it's worth hanging about and getting those sunset shots because afterwards you will not regret waiting and getting that lovely light and just it just makes the image. Now if you have any tips of your own for travel photography, pop them down in the comments. I love hearing your tips. There's been some really great tips on the previous videos, on the other Tutorial Tuesday videos. So I really like hearing those. Pop them down there. I think we're building out a nice community, so I'd love to hear some more. If you do have any questions, of course, pop them down there as well. There's a full list of all the gear we use to shoot these photos, these, this whole video, everything in the description, so you can check that out as well. Make sure to subscribe if you're new because we have the tutorials every Tuesday, as you can imagine from the name. We have reviews, we have all kinds of stuff all the time. So definitely worth 
subscribing if you're new. Make sure to give the video a like if you liked it as well. That, whoo, that helps us out. It really helps me out, you know? So I, I really appreciate that. Of course, I will see you in the next video. But as always, thanks for watching.